So a report from Wisconsin Department of Correction reveals that over 50 percent of male inmates identifying as transgender females in Wisconsin prisons have been convicted of at least one count of sexual assault, assault or sexual abuse. Out of 161 transgender identifying male inmates, 81 of them have been convicted of such offenses, including crimes like sexual exploitation of child rape and sexual intercourse without consent. The Oversight Project at the Heritage Foundation obtained these records, and Director Mike Howell emphasized that men belong with men and men only in prison. He argued that housing sex offender men who claim to be women with female inmates is concerning and contributes to perceived moral decline. What do you have to say about this story? I mean, least surprising story ever. Um, I've been talking about this, and, and there's, there's a two-prong approach here. First and foremost, the advantage of a man. You commit a crime, you commit a sex crime, you molest a child, and you know how they treat pedophiles in prison. You know how they treat sexual deviants in prison. So you just say, actually, no, I'm transgendered. Uh, that's what's actually happening. Please put me amongst the women uh, inmates who uh, now need to accept, and the fact that the prisons are doing this. <laughs> They're acknowledging them and affirming them and that taxpayers are having to bear the expense. I can't even talk about how much that infuriates me. Um, the But the second element of this is that there is what's not being spoken about, what's well, definitely being spoken about my podcast is the growing alphabet mafia um, and how they are now adding letters that really just imply sexual deviancy. You know what I mean? Like a, a man feeling the need to put on panties, uh, a, a woman's underwear, and you're pretending that that's like a, a gender or an identity. Perfect example, Sam Brinton, the nuclear energy the White guy. House yep. person who literally was open about the fact that he was a sexual deviant. I mean, yep. wearing heels, lipsticks, into pup play, which if you look into what pup play actually is, you will be shocked at how disgusting it is. Um, you know, on a leash and still got the job. You know, you used to be fearful that if they Googled you and you'd find this stuff online, your employer, you couldn't get hired. <laughs> this guy got, right? Like, oh, oh, this guy. That used, to oh, be a, that, that used to be a disqualifier if you yeah. could find somebody naked and in straps and into pup play. Sam Britton just... Outwardly, I am a freak and flying my freak high. Gets the job at What's the White his House. What's job? He was a nuclear. He was head the nu head head of nuclear waste in the Energy Department. I gotta go. No, I, no, I promise yeah. you. I promise you. And then guess what happened? He's a club dog. He got arrested for three stealing. times for stealing women's panties at freaking at airports. The airport. That guy? Yes. And yeah, then, not he just one never. pair. Oh, can this suitcase full? I'm calling other, BS. Can. The a guy like that would never do no, something would never, like this. Right, Candace, what are you talking about? What are you supposed to be surprised? I am shocked. Told you I'm a freak, and then I did some freaky things. Things, right, and that's yeah. what's happening right now yeah. in this so this climate of non-binary. I'm a man, but I want to wear women's underwear and be free. They're telling you that something is wrong, yep. right? They are saying I am flying my freak flag high, and then we're all supposed to be shocked when they do something that's sexually deviant. And, and, yeah. and that it's mind-boggling to me. It's why I am that it is an issue that I care passionately about. I am a mother to young children. Why does a drag queen want access to a child? Can anybody can anybody answer that big question? Okay, you're a man and you like to dress up as a woman and go to nightclubs, mm -hmm. okay? Flying your free flag high. Now you're demanding access to read books to children. Mm -hmm. Does that not just do we do, can we does it pass the sniff test, guys? Yeah. You know? And then you have I women, do women the sniff out test there. With this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's you know it's really interesting. I we're here. We're to... queer. We're coming for we're your children. children. You've yeah. heard oh this God. before. Yes. And Let's all say it in well, unison, guys. Yeah. Right? I mean, and the, and it's the, scary. And, can, and here's my thing. Like for instance, like like you know, I we have everybody here has freaking gay friends. I have gay family members. When it comes to like the Pride Month and everything, it's like because you're talking about the oh the sexuality of it. It's like when is it ever cool? Name another month or a day or a moment where it's cool for any group to walk outside butt naked, yeah. g-string. And I get that there's like. People are bringing their kids, which I think they should, you know, go to jail. But when is it ever mm -hmm. cool for you to be in a bike butt naked? Yeah. How, what? How is that? Literally, is that? if it I just... said, hey, guys, tomorrow's family day. Okay. We're going to have a family parade and yes. we're going to celebrate families. No person is showing up butt naked, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's no no family showing. So well, you don't know there's Tom. Something Tom about goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Tom is get wild. naked, get Tom. a bicycle. Get, you know the men that were on bicycles, literally naked, right? But for some reason, when you say it's an LGBTQ pride parade, you know you're going to see nudity. What, what does that tell you? And people are fearful to talk about this, and it's it's crazy to me as a parent that we've allowed this to go so far. That we've allowed sexual deviancy to be mm -hmm. perceived as an idea. Identity, you know, as you know, something that needs to be treated and loved. And who are the people behind saying we have a lot women? 
It's always women. Why don't why, why do women not see the ridiculousness yeah. and why aren't the women speaking out more about trans men in sports? Like why don't it, Well because those women are, aren't those are feminists. Those are the Chelsea handlers, right? And so that that's a whole different simulation. It's it, the moms at home are not the ones yeah. that are pushing that, you What know? percentage of women under 30 best guess do you think fall into that type of ideology? Like feminist? Yeah. Like the, they love Chelsea Handler. They're cool with this. They're cool with men being in sports. Difference if you're talking like early 20s versus end of 20s. I'm saying I'm saying Gen Z. Let's talk about that. 25 and under. That's the future. Mm -hmm. This is who we're trying to convince not to go down this path. Uh, you you want a percentage? I, that's what, that what I'm getting. Should... Well, I know that you've highlighted that 20% yeah. of Gen Z identifies LGBT. I, it, but I what... mean, look, look, here's a, here's a mayor in Burbank. He's an Armenian mayor. Okay, this guy. In the classroom, he's having this guy spank him. Check this out. This is the Burbank? <laughs> this is the Burbank mayor. The, the music might be. That's the Burbank what? mayor that's doing this. Pride, what? proud, love yeah. is love. I mean, she's, pro she's a strong warrior. And he's like, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. Some of the craziest tweets came out about this guy, which is absolutely wild when you see the GUSD folks posted his uh, tweets. Oh, my God. Constantine Anthony out of Burbank doing this. By the way. Uh, here's Oklahoma Elementary School faces calls for uh, firing a uh, drag queen principal. Mm -hmm. The principal in Oklahoma is a drag queen. Can you please pull this up picture for us? Pull this picture up for us to see it. So calls to fire drag queen principal Shane Mernon, yeah. also known as Chantel Mandalay. We have moonlights as a as a as a drag queen, as a drag, which but is then scary. also pr previously was arrested on child porn. Oh, Twenty years ago, 20, yep. yeah. And, and, yep. Got, and basically got away with it because of a technicality. I looked into this case. Technicality because they found what was clear to one judge and another judge was child porn. But then when they brought the trial forth, they couldn't identify the child. And so basically they were like, you can't prove this is actually a child, right? So they had to drop, Stop. I swear, yeah. because you have to be able to prove. So if I say that this is a child, even if it's abundantly clear to all of us this is a child, you have to be able to prove that, right? So it was clear enough that they arrested, they arrested him. It was clear enough that a judge said this arrest holds. And then another wow. judge said, you actually have to be able to say who that child, like we have to be able to say that person is actually a minor and they weren't able to do this. So so the charges got dropped on a technicality, right? So he gets this expunged from his record and then he somehow gets voted in a private ceremony. The, 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 they came together, no parents were there, and they, they made him principal years, 20 years later. Child, arrested for child porn Pornography. charges. Yeah. What and city in Oklahoma? Because if and this now goes he wants down to be in, in front of children. If this uh, goes down in LA, you know? San Francisco, no. and okay. yeah. a drag queen. Oklahoma. And, and Rob, can you show the photo? Can, can we just all be completely honest? And all the viewers out there, look how scary drag queens are like like some people have like a clown phobia. Look how scary that guy is right there. Yeah. Look at look zoom in on the guy on the right. What that looks like like the penguin from, There's from Batman. There's worse pictures, yeah. by the way. Those, yeah. yeah, but they're scary. Like yeah. it's scary. Nothing You're not like attractive. somebody who was arrested for child pornography. Demanding access to elementary school children, and they're and they're cool with it, and they're cool. Uh, well, they're I don't think I don't think anymore because no, the story got exposed, cool and now no, not the Oklahoma. If you I don't know if you know this, is actually the reddest state in the union. Oh really? Yeah, yeah so, West Virginia, Oklahoma, yeah, Alabama, Oklahoma's those three. Number one, the most the most the reddest state in the union. Is, Boomer is Sooners. But Pat, what you in L.A.? There's a story about uh, California. Uh, Read it. it. So in California. Um, which Here it is. California passes bill punishing parents who don't affirm Tom, trans kids in custody battles. Okay, so if you don't affirm kids in custody battles, uh, Elon called it other madness. California State Assembly passed AB 957, which mandates that judges in child custody cases consider whether a parent has affirmed a child's transgender identity. An amendment in June broadened the requirement stating the that the parents must affirm their child's gender identity to be deemed suitable... Okay, no. for the child's welfare in court, to which um, critics like Elon Musk, we know what happened with one of his billion children, um, strongly criticized the bill. Musk described it as utter madness and warned it could jeopardize parental custody if parents disagree with their child's transgender identity. So now California is like penalizing people 
if they don't affirm a kid's transgender transition. Have you seen, are you familiar I, with this? Yeah, I'm familiar with this. And, and what I've said is that I've stopped being outraged at California stories. It's like, to me, it's like, if you're still a parent and you're raising your kid in California, outside of like, you quite literally have no money and cannot leave the state, I, I, I can't sympathize with you anymore. I mean, I, I can't, I literally can't sympathize anymore. It's gotten so crazy there. Yeah. The, the policies that they're putting forth, that they're able to push through, they're telling you, I mean, that is a, it's basically a communist state at this point that people are basically watching North Korea be built around them under the most extreme circumstances and they're staying there and then they're going, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. It's like California has showed you what California is. It is time to pick up your children and leave California. The state owns your children already in a, in a variety of different ways. They're, they're, it's, it, it doesn't, it's ending with transgenderism. This has been going on for a very long time. You saw this with COVID. They, they want to put shots in your child's arm. You have no rights in California. So I am now removing your right to complain if mm. you are if you are still living yeah. in the state of California. But you can also ski and surf on the same day. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I, I love how so. people complain about everything, Kansas, when it comes to Cali, the traffic, that, and they're just like, yeah, but the weather. The I'm weather. like, it's not worth it. Yeah. I'd rather <laughs> sweat my ass The off weather here. in North Korea is just you know wonderful. I mean? and, and, and yeah. Like, <laughs> Like, summer like, in North oh, Korea, you Pyongyang. Seen the you summers. haven't been to Pyongyang this <laughs> yeah. summer. Have, have you, you seen a North Korean yeah. sunset? Oh yeah. my God! <laughs> I winter in Pyongyang yeah. and, and, and I and summer so in the Hamptons. Candace, so here's my question to kind of wrap up all the so the feminism, the the women, the the, the making men weak, right? The the going after the kids, the trans thing, the going after, like is it a concerted? Effort by like when you hear like the Klaus and and uh, the Bill Gates where they're like listen overpopulation is 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 the biggest problem is it an accident or are these guys just openly telling us because all those people that we talked about they're not having children yeah the trans you know what I mean the 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 weak men they don't want to have kids anymore the the feminists are like we don't need men is it by accident or is it an effort. To really slow down the, the the population, like is it a is it a deeper thing? I think America's at war. Mm -hmm. I think America is at war. I think that people always thought World War Three would be something like World War Two. People would be dropping nukes, and no, I think it's it's a silent war. It's an ideological war. Um, I believe that there is a globalized effort to take down America from within, and people realizing after years, China is a huge part of this effort yep. that you could take over America without firing a single bu single bullet, and it be it begins and ends with culture. And that's why I believe that culture is the biggest battle that we're facing right now. Sick. And TikTok really helps there. Mm. I don't think, uh, uh, by the way, I think that that, that fight, uh, the feminist fight is, is coming to an end yeah. because the Thank product God. is showing common sense is winning and data is winning, proving that this is not working. And there's more 60-year-old women right now talking about the biggest mistake they made is buying into being a feminist. They can no longer have kids. They wish they were married. They wish they would have done this. Guys, I it's, wish you were right. I really do. But I spend probably more time than anyone here with women under 30. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I say, guys, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Did these 25 and under women, they, they are so far gone. And that's the future. I wish you were right. You know, you know what it is uh, for for you to say that. You also contribute towards it, though, because uh, think about you're it. You're blaming me. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not blaming you. Sorry, lady. No, no. Yeah, I'm not. Ahead, I'm not blaming you. There's an element of it that even, you know, w whatever you want to change, you have to look at it in a different way and not capitalize off what's out there. You have to eventually. When I was, all I did was women. From you know 14 to 25, that was my number one priority. And I'm like, listen, that's all I want to do. 26 times a year, I'm in Vegas. I was a four-hour drive away from Vegas. And Vegas, the opportunity for prospecting was priceless on what it was. This is pre-Tinder days. I have no clue what it is to swipe, right? You have to actually go talk and prospect. Like, that was work. Yep. Like, it takes work <laughs> of going in and networking and meeting money. and a friend and this and then eventually to go versus today it's a DM. Boom. You're working your numbers, 100 messages, boom, let's go 6 o'clock. Then you got one at 8, then you got one at 10. I don't know that system, but it's a completely different ballgame. I think it's also an element of, you know, us – as men, we need to also kind of challenge the status quo and tell them we're not attracted to this. This is not attractive anymore, right? I don't know what you're doing. You think this is attractive? We're also not turned on by this. I think we can also play a role in that, but that's a whole different conversation. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.